Welcome to the slice of the show that tackles your questions about getting the best out of travel. We're off to Turkey and Canada shortly, but first... Plenty of people have got in touch about Fiumicino Airport in Rome. Following a devastating fire there in Terminal 3 in May, airlines have been allowed fewer slots at the Italian capital's main airport. Some flights are being diverted to Rome's second airport, Ciampino, and others to Naples. Airlines are offering flexibility to switch flights but are stopping short of paying for ground transportation and are not obliged to pay compensation. Now, I know from experience how distressing it is to fly to a new country and then to be refused entry because of a bureaucratic snarl-up. Linda Smith had that experience when she flew in from Singapore to the Chinese capital. I planned to be in Beijing for less than 72 hours and was led to believe I wouldn't need a visa. Unfortunately, on arrival at Beijing airport, I was turned away seemingly because I was flying back to Singapore rather than on to a different country. Linda, thank you for getting in touch. Sorry to hear about your experience. It appears you've been badly advised. China has recently relaxed the red tape for short visits to Beijing, Shanghai and six other cities. Travellers from many countries are now allowed to stay for up to 72 hours without a visa, so long as they are in transit to a third country. In other words, going from A to B to C. Sadly, anyone flying from A to B and back to A doesn't qualify and is expected to apply for a visa in the usual way. So I suggest you have a robust conversation with your travel agent. Next, Fraser Murdoch from Glasgow in Scotland is one of millions of tourists heading for Turkey this summer. Should I get Turkish currency before I go or when I arrive? When you arrive because you are sure to get a better rate. This year, the Turkish lira has been having a torrid time. In the first six months of 2015, it lost about 20% of its value against the US dollar and the British pound, and around 10% against the euro. With high inflation prevailing in Turkey, the slump is likely to continue. So rates are going to improve in your favor every day that you wait. Once in Turkey, you'll find that bureaux de change are very competitive. On my last visit to Istanbul in April, I changed little and often and found that by the end of my trip, I was getting a significantly better rate than at the start. Finally, Alison Stubbs has a simple question about Canada's premier train ride. We're going to make a trip on the Rocky Mountaineer next year. Is there a preferred direction for views? This heritage train has a range of itineraries between British Columbia and Alberta, taking you through the Rocky Mountains on some spectacular lines, notably between Vancouver and Banff. And because it's a tourist train, journeys are timed to take place entirely in daylight, unlike the Canadian scheduled Trans-Canada service, which is much more rewarding going east than west. So just choose the direction of travel that suits the rest of your plans. But I hope I can persuade you to add on a coastal rail experience that is, in my book, one of the best train trips in all of North America, the Cascades train, which clings to the Pacific shore between Vancouver and Seattle. We've reached the end of the line for now, but remember that Global Guru is the element of the travel show that aims to help with every aspect of your journey. So whether you're cruising the ocean or planning for Christmas, just email thetravelshow at bbc.com and I'll do my very best to find you an answer. From me, Simon Calder, the Global Guru, bye for now and see you next time. Can I just do that with the bbc.co.uk? If we can go back just to the end of that, thank you. Just a tiny bit uh, earlier, thank you very much. Great, thank you, perfect. We've reached the end of the line for now, but remember that Global Guru is the element of the travel show that aims to help with every aspect of your journey. So whether you're cruising the ocean or planning for Christmas, just email the travel show at bbc.co.uk and I'll do my very best to find you an answer. From me, Simon Calder, the Global Guru, bye for now and see you next time. Great, happy to go on with um, August if you are, since we're there. We'd like to do one more retake from the first question, Simon, okay. please. Thank you. The first answer, answer one. 
You could turn it into a spectacular global guru is the element of the travel show that aims to help with every aspect of your journey. So whether you're cruising the ocean or planning for Christmas, just email and I'll do my very best to find you an answer. From me, Simon Calder, the global guru, bye for now and see you next time. You could turn it into a spectacular journey through the heart of the Americas. Starting up again in November, the weekly ferry from Cartagena will take you in 18 hours across the Caribbean to the port of Colón in Panama. Here you can catch the world's fastest transcontinental train, which runs parallel to the Panama Canal and reaches the capital in a couple of hours. Overnight in Panama City, then take a series of buses and watch Central America unfold before your very eyes. Even allowing for some fairly chaotic border crossings in 48 hours, you can be clean through Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador and Guatemala and in the Mexican border town of Tapachula. It's a magnificent journey along the Pan American Highway and I've covered every inch of it. By now you'll be halfway through your week so take time off in the resort of Huatulco with another overnight stay in Oaxaca, one of my favourite cities in all of Latin America. From here it's a mere seven hours on one of several luxury bus lines to reach the Mexican capital. Now I know from experience how distressing it is to fly to a new country and then to be refused entry because of a bureaucratic snarl up. Linda Smith had that experience when she flew in from Singapore to the Chinese capital. I planned to be in Beijing for less than 72 hours and was led to believe I wouldn't need a visa. Unfortunately, on arrival at Beijing airport, I was turned away seemingly because I was flying back to Singapore rather than onto a different country.